go to the North Pole direct, if your magnetic fields are actually doing a fifth rate, right, you're going to be walking to, you're going to have to head out there. <laughs> then, follow the magnetic curve. You understand? Yeah. How did they find the North and South Pole, the centre? They didn't. <laughs> they never got there. As they come up to it, right, the fellow's got, this is how your magnetic fields change and you can walk through polarities, right? So the first guys are in base camp and they're thinking that the North Pole's up there and South, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So they get a compass and they start walking. Now, a compass is supposed to go there. Now, if you turn around this way, the compass is going to turn around and fill in that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, fill it. When they started walking up towards the North Pole, like that, this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still watching this, yeah. and they end up back in there. <laughs> well, that's my steps there already. <laughs> I'm like a base camp. So they shook it, the damn thing turned around. They walked through it, and it didn't change. It never moved. It stayed in front. But it walked in a curve. Now they did it again. So the second time they do it, you don't do the first thing again. There's all these alignments of numbering system that you go through. So the second time they do it, this is what happens. Put them in a different direction, and a different charge. And they end up, oi, we're back at base camp. So they shook it, and the damn thing turns around and heads back to there. So then they move over. You understand? And each different one, this is what they also found as well, and the amounts that they never done by numbers, they start walking up, and they go, because the damn thing wants to head down. And then they move over about four, the damn thing wants to head up. And then it wants to go this way, and it wants to go that way. And so what happened is, around, if you're looking at it, around, this is the top, what you say, there's North Pole, what's happened is, they've walked up here and walked into there. Uh. Okay? They've walked up here and they've walked into there. <laughs> okay, see the horseshoes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's brought them back here and it's changed. They've walked in and out the fields. Okay? Now, you talk about in the Earth the equator line. Okay? So, if the equator line is one side's one way, the other side's the other. So like that. Shouldn't you be walking up to here and everything else and your compass does a flip? Mm. Uh, well, it doesn't. No, that's right. Right. And when you start walking and they did this and they're following the things, this is what actually happens. They end up up at this end and they never get to it either. And then that comes back down and then they're doing this. <laughs> and they get an eight and they move over and they get another eight. You understand? Mm. Another eight. And then when all those are set together, what you find is that you have an eight running through this way. You understand? Yeah. Now it doesn't go one way, the fields go both ways. The novice and equal reaction. This is where your electricity is all set out and everything else, that your field effects run two ways at once. Mm. You know so it runs two ways at once. <laughs> now it can't run one way at once. For every action, there's got to be an opposite and equal reaction. Got to be or can't move. Mm. It can't just make one thing go one way. So within your motor there, did you know that what you're doing is you're actually in one direction, you're trying to throw it that way. But at the same time, to make it rotate, you're trying to throw it that way. Okay? And if you didn't have the other field on the other side, she just goes bang. Yeah, 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 yeah. She wouldn't go over. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It wouldn't do that. So you put these fields in the four points, so you reckon. So you got four points of flow. So you pull on, push off, pull on, push off. How far can you bring them in closer and closer and closer? You're going to look at the fish and pipe on there and you girls, the coils are only that far apart, aren't they? <laughs> Massive coils sideways and everything else with the magnets fields, but they're still on, off, on, off. Yeah. Right? Pull, push, pull, push. Yeah, you can right. feel them, that's right. You can feel them. But it's a very efficient washing machine. Very efficient. Well, it's normally what lets you down is not the magnets or anything else. What lets you down is the mechanical or the electrics. Yeah. Electrics so what, up top. On, the, on this one we're trying to do is we switch on the electric um, power. Yep. Okay. Yep. Think of this for a second. Do is this other one what we played with and everything else, which is um, uh, magnets, right? On the sides of a big disc. Okay? And then that went back to a battery, 12 volt batteries. Okay? Now it was on a cam setup to change the pulses by a cam. So instead of letting the magnet field, you coil face and everything do that. 
does it by can. Now, what would happen is this thing, this motor was revving somewhere in about. Um, uh, at first, you can take it to any revs, but we had it run about a thousand revs. Now, all you do is take one of those wires. And there's two opposite wires that you got positive and negative for a north and south wire, right? Take one of those wires, go back to the centre rotating shaft, not to the coils. Just go back to the centre shaft and touch it once like that, and it creates a spark. Did you know it jumps a thousand revs? The thing just jumped up a thousand revs just because of one little touch from the wire. Now you do it the other way. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, just a little touch and she flips it down the and keeps it. It doesn't build up speed and then slow it down. It stays there. And then you can do it again. And it'll jump again. These things we play with on these. I don't pay electricity. You might think I'm silly and everything else. All these idiots who maybe look at this and say, he's called me strange. I'm definitely strange, but I, I Nothing don't... Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I don't do these for experimental. I don't do these for making for me or other people. Yeah. If I do things, know things and everything else, there's usually not a single reason. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, you just want to do it. There's just, no, I don't. Yeah. I find these things and I don't want to do them. And so other people like to know about them when they see it and everything else like Peter and me. He wants to shove it up on the net. <laughs> Joe and Joe, the famous Joe. Mm -hmm. well, I don't, want, do I don't go near a stinking computer. Yeah. Hate it. I don't read anybody's stuff. I don't check on anybody's stuff. I won't uh, look at anybody else's devices as such or read up on anybody's technology on you know, anything like Adams Generator Motors and all these other ones. Or I don't read. Playing Shellburger. So this touch, so I'm really inter interested in this, uh, with the sale, uh, it also in farm and also working on that for a while, and if you can help the farm by fixing up the tractor, you know, it's good practice, I'm, I'm trying to do a big pile of them all this, you know? Yeah. If you yeah. are building a cell to produce hydrogen, to put into a motor, you're going to need something out the back of your car here. Yeah. But a semi-trailer lot to make an, an amount enough to keep yourself sustainably going. Okay, people don't understand it that you've got yourself a um, you're supposed to have a vacuum seal cylinder if that's what you've got there. And that vacuum seal cylinder can't pull out the amount of stuff that you need in gas to actually run your vehicle in volume. So if anybody out there, I don't give, give a damn this goes out there, Joe never done gas to hook up the motors. He never made hydrogen and oxygen to run a motor. Yeah, he, like this. Well, this is the scientist and everybody else and just if anybody puts that out there they're gonna say, Oh Joe's full of shit because it won't do it. You're right. Yeah, that's right. It's not what you're doing. You are changing the frequencies. That's right. Okay? Yep. The the cell is for changing a frequency to change the the way that your motor runs without that kind of fuel. Going into your engine is air. Yep. With the right okay. frequency. Is it, is it air being right frequency. That's it, what it, you're really after. And is it the air, or the gases in the air that's exploding? Creates Not the gases in the air. Because no. there are flammable gases in the air. There is. And it's Did the frequency you know, that's. Analyze this if you want. Did you know that scientifically all the stuff coming out of your exhaust pipe should be explodable? Yeah, but it's not because of a catalytic converter. No, you, 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 yes. the ones without a catal uh, catalytic and everything else never exploded when it come out of the exhaust either. Because what they don't teach you is that when you fire these things in the 